January 20th, 1995, Philippines and U.S. investigators learned that Ramzi Youssef, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, and their fellow plotters were actually planning three different attacks when they were foiled in early January. In addition to the planned assassination of the Pope and the first phase of Operation Pajinka previously discovered, they also planned to crash about a dozen airliners into prominent U.S. buildings. It is often mistakenly believed that there is one Bajika plan to blow up some planes and crash others into buildings. But in fact, these different forms of attacks are to take place in two separate phases. Philippine investigator Colonel Rodolfo Mendoza learns about the second phase through the examination of recently captured Bajika plotter, Abdul Hakim Murad. And on January 20th, Mendoza would write a memo about Murad's latest confession saying, with regards to their plan to dive crash a commercial aircraft at CIA headquarters, subject alleged that the idea of doing something came out during his casual conversation with Ramza Yusuf, and there was no specific plan yet for its execution. What the subject had in mind is that he will board any American aircraft pretending to be an ordinary passenger. Then he will hijack said aircraft, control its cockpit, and dive it into CIA headquarters. He will not use a bomb or explosives. It is simply a suicidal mission that he is very much willing to execute. As Colonel Mendoza continued to interrogate Abdul Hakim Murad, details of a post pajinka second wave emerge. Author of A Thousand Years for Revenge, Peter Lance, would call the phase a virtual blueprint of the 9-11 attacks. Abdul Hakim Murad revealed a plan to hijack commercial airliners using sleeper cells inside the United States who are training at flight schools. Murad himself had been training in the United States for this plot. He names the buildings that would be targeted for the attack. CIA headquarters, the Pentagon, an unidentified nuclear power plant, the Transamerica Tower in San Francisco, the Sears Tower in Chicago, and the World Trade Center in New York City. Murad continues to reveal more about the plot until he is handed over to the FBI in April. He identifies approximately 10 of the men who met him at the flight schools inside the United States. They came from all over the Gulf, such as Sudan, United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, and even in Pakistan. Apparently, none of these pilots matched the name of the 9-11 hijackers later on. However, he also gives information pointing to the Al-Qaeda operative, Ridwan Samudin, who went by the nom de Gwar Hambali through a front company named Kosan Jaya. Hambali will host an important Al-Qaeda meeting attended by two of the 9-11 hijackers, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and Nawaf al-Hazmi, in January of 2000, in which the NSA and CIA were monitoring. Colonel Mendoza even makes a flowchart connecting many key players together, including Osama bin Laden, bin Laden's brother-in-law, Mohammed Jamal Khalifa, Ramza Youssef, and Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, his uncle. Philippines authorities will later claim that they provide all the information to U.S. authorities, including the FBI, but the United States fails to follow up on any of it. By February 7th, 1995, Shortly after Ramzi Yusuf is arrested, investigators discover a computer file of a letter on his laptop signed by Khalid Sheikh and Bajinka. An eyewitness account of the arrest is given to Time magazine by a Khalid Sheikh, who is also staying, incidentally, in the same building where Yusuf was arrested. Investigators also discover that he had frequently visited Yusuf's apartment in Manila, Philippines, with the bombs for the Bajinka plot were being made. They also find Yusuf had written down a phone number for Khalid Doha. Doha is the capital of Qatar. Shortly after being apprehended, Yusuf called this number in Qatar and asks to speak to a Khalid. Further intelligence connected him to the 1993 World Trade Center bombing when records are found of money wired from a Khalid Sheikh in Doha, Qatar to Mohammed Salame, one of the bombers involved with the World Trade Center bombing in 93. Yusuf's 
seized telephone directory for a Zahid Sheikh Mohammed, Khalid's uncle, and also a brother to Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. Not long after the discovery was made, Pakistani investigators raid Zahid's office in Peshawar, Pakistan, but Zahid had already fled. Nevertheless, apparently by the end of 1995, investigators make the connection between Zahid and Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and Pakistan ISI, the intelligence services. The FBI successfully arranges for a photograph to be taken of Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, and he is positively identified from the photo in December of 95. This results in his indictment in January of 96 for his role in the 1993 World Trade Center bombing. However, there was a deeper connection between Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and Ramzi Youssef, both of the Baluchi clan in Pakistan, as well as the Pakistan ISI and the highest officials in Pakistan government. After the bombing of the World Trade Center, U.S. agents uncover photographs showing Khalid Sheikh Mohammed with close associates of future Pakistani Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif. The Financial Times would later note that Mohammed and his allies must have felt confident that their ties to senior Pakistani Islamists whose power had been centered within the country's intelligence service, the ISI, would prove invaluable. Also in 93, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed is involved in an operation to assassinate its prime minister, Benazir Bhutto, using Ramzi Youssef as the shooter. The Los Angeles Times would later report that Khalid Sheikh Mohammed had spent most of his times in the 1990s in Pakistan, and that Pakistani leadership throughout the 1990s had sympathized with Osama bin Laden's fundamentalist rhetoric. This sympathy allowed Mohammed to operate as he pleased in Pakistan. Later on, the New York Times would also report that Khalid Sheikh Mohammed was not a stationary man. He had also visited the United States, Qatar, and even Israel.